Hey guys, Compulsion84 here. Today I'm going to be discovering the difference between 16 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of RAM when it comes to video export speed and just, uh, you know, performance in general. So what I'm going to be doing, I've currently got 16 gigs of RAM, I got another 16 gig set of 2 8s, and I'm going to be doing testing beforehand to see how fast I can export four different videos. Some of those videos have both uh, 30 frames per second, and then some are at 60, so I've got a lot of data. I've already done that. I'm going to put this RAM in in just a minute, and then after that, I'm going to be doing the tests all over again. And then what I'm going to do is plot all the data in Excel and show the differences and how much faster that uh, my computer performs when it comes to exporting video when, uh, yeah, you go to 32 gigs of RAM versus 16. I'll give you the specs of everything on screen and I'll post them in the description below, but this is what I'm using to run this test. I've got a MSI Z170A Gaming M7 Socket 1151A motherboard, which is, you know, relatively new. I went to the new socket type late last year. I'm recording this video in June of 2016. The CPU is an Intel 6700K i7, which is Skylake. It is a quad core with hyper threading, and it's got an 8 megabyte shared level 3 cache. For my GPU, I'm using an EVGA 970 with the ACX cooler mod. It's got 4 gigabytes of onboard RAM, and I'm using the Superclocked or SC version. For RAM, I'm currently starting off with the same exact kit of this, the G-Skill 2 times 8 gigabyte stick. This is at DDR4 at 3200 uh, hertz timing. What I am going to be doing is, right now I've got the RAM clocked to stock frequency. I'm going to test the old RAM with 16 gigs at stock, and then the, the uh, 32 gigs at stock, and then after that I'm going to crank the frequency up. I was playing Fallout 4, and Fallout 4 crashes if you turn the frequency up, so I'll also give you kind of a bonus data set of 32 gigabytes of RAM at uh, stock frequencies, and then jumping as high as I can clock at around 3000 or 3200 megahertz. Oh, let's see, the other things about this RAM is, it's got timings of 16, 16, 16, 36, a CL of 16, and the voltage is 1.35. Now for hard drives, it gets a little bit uh, convoluted, so in order to optimize my speeds, I've set these up on multiple drives. So I use PowerDirector 12, because I can't afford Sony Vegas, and the Adobe Suite is a complete ripoff. But anyways, what I do is I have a 512 gig Samsung 850 Pro SSD, and that's where PowerDirector is installed, where Windows is installed, and where most of my programs installed. That's my kind of primary drive. Now what I do is, is I export the video from the program to 128 gigabyte Samsung 840 Pro SSD. And I chose that one because it has quick write speeds and quick read speeds, even though it's a little bit smaller of a drive. I don't need huge file size when it comes to exporting. Finally, the third drive I use is my source drive, where I keep all the raw videos, raw pictures, uh, audio commentary, everything else. And that is a 4 terabyte Western Digital Black 7200 RPM, I'm going to call physical or spinning hard drive. It's a SATA Gen 3 at 6 gigs per second, a 64 megabyte cache. And the important thing is, because there were two iterations of this one, this is the WD4003FZEX. I believe the old generation was F something else EX, but uh, if you buy a new 4 terabyte black drive, which are fantastic, make sure you get the FZ EX or else you're going to get hosed. So that's, that's all I've got for this first part. I'm going to turn this off, probably eat some lunch, and then I'm going to redo all my benchmarks after I stick this, uh, this stuff in here. So I'm very eager to see what happens. The fun part about this is I was going to do this anyways. I mean, I'm an engineer. I love to do experiments and, and crap like that. So. I'm kind of sharing my data with you, and this might help people. There's always a lot of skepticism where, well, will going to more RAM actually affect video editing performance? Some people say yes, some people say no. I'm going to give you hard data from my system under identical circumstances to give you, you know, let you know if it's worthwhile. Uh, the reason I bought this more RAM is is because DDR4 has come down in price a lot. This set was 80 bucks. Starting to ramble. I'm cutting this off here. I'll catch you guys in a little bit once I have more data.
All right, I'm back after a couple of days. I did all my tests. I've got all the data compiled and a couple of nice charts. Before I move forward, I'm going to reiterate through a couple of the uh, parameters of the test because I don't remember if I mentioned them before and I want to make sure that I, you know, outline my conditions really well. So what I did for my test was I had four different videos and I tested them three different ways. I tested them with 16 gigabytes of RAM at the standard DDR4 clock frequency, at least for my RAM, which was 2133. Then I tested 32 gigabytes at 2133 megahertz. And finally, I tested 32 gigabytes at 3066 megahertz because at 3200, which was supposed to be the rated speed, my RAM started crashing my computer and starting instability. That was kind of a problem with my rig. There's nothing wrong with 3200 megahertz RAM. I ran all my production or exports or whatever you want to call it completely through. I didn't use the estimated times. I just started it, left my computer idle, and then wandered away for a while and, you know, came back and recorded it. <laughs> I don't want to work. I just want to code videos all day. I did H.264 encoding, and when the videos had it, I did 60 frames per second and then also 30 frames per second to do a comparison. Uh, one of the videos didn't have any 60 FPS footage, so I didn't bother encoding them to that. I'll throw up my raw data real quick, and then I'll get to the actual pretty charts. So I was very surprised with the data I got. I thought 32 gigs would make a much bigger deal than it actually did. Again, I've got a pretty high-end i7 rig. Um, we're not getting into like a workstation performance with like a server processor, but it is a quad core. It has a fast clock, you know, hyper threading. I thought that it would have gotten bottlenecked a little bit. I was running this with a 970 graphics card or GPU. So it, you know, I thought something would have slowed this down and gone to the RAM more, but really I found out my RAM usage only changed about 5%. So really it's, it was not a big deal at all. So the chart up here now is my results. The blue is the 16 gigabytes at stock clock. The orange is the 32 gigabytes at stock clock. And the gray is 32 gigabytes at the overclocked, which it says 2942. It was really set to 3066, but for some reason Windows was reading it there. But you get the idea. It was clocked faster than the stock RAM. And this is the really interesting thing. Each video is grouped horizontally. So you can see I've got don't, I've got trigger safety at 30 and 60 FPS. And then I got a couple other videos. The most interesting one, the 1080p video comparison had four video files all at 1080p. So there was a lot of data. It was about 20 minutes long, a lot of things to crawl through. So that one took a while. But if you look at the difference between blue and orange, it was very, very small. And if I go back to my Excel sheet real quick, so again, you're talking a two and a half percent difference, which again, the RAM was relatively cheap. To get 16 more gigs is only 80 bucks, but for a 3% difference some of the time, and most of the time a less than 1% difference, what I've been taught in school is insignificant is less than 1%. So I would say you get insignificant gains in the majority of cases, it's not really worthwhile to go to the 32 gigs of RAM. However, um, I'm not doing testing for this, but I would imagine if you were eight gigs and you had a higher end CPU, GPU, etc., it might be worthwhile to go to 16 because eight gigs might bottleneck you much sooner especially if you have a, a big GPU with a high memory size, because that eats into your memory um, in Windows a bit. What's interesting is that I was still getting a low overall usage. I was using maybe 14 or 15 percent versus when I was using 16 gigs, I was getting maybe 18, maybe 20 percent usage. So really, with the, the vast majority of the time, it was a very low usage. A couple times I saw it jump to 80, but that's when I was doing secondary tests and I was also doing other things. So I think my other actions were causing my RAM to jump way up. The RAM wasn't getting used to its capacity. It was about speed, which was really interesting. So you can see here that the times are shorter, which is obviously better. But the real question is how much shorter, which is this next graph. Oh, well, come on. Ah, so this, I was, I was a little surprised by this because this graph you can do with any decent RAM just by tweaking your motherboard BIOS settings a little bit. So green is the difference from 16 to 32 in percentage and you can kind of see some of those stats. Most of them are less than 1% and there's a couple that are less than 3%. I should say two and a half or less. But the real interesting one is the blue, which is 32 gig OC to 32 gig stock. And you can see for all the videos, you're looking at 15% or better difference. Uh, you, it looks like the highest I got was 17 and a half, which is still very significant. And again, what's really neat about this is, this isn't, I say overclocking my RAM, I'm really, 
I'll use the term upclocking. I'm upclocking it to the speed that it's rated for. I'm not I'm not increasing it and overclocking it beyond what it's made to do. It's kind of blurring the line, but I would say overclocking is really going beyond what it's made to do. You're getting into something that could be dangerous. I'm just running the RAM how it's made to be run. However, it's not how the, the most motherboards typically operate. If you turn on like XMP or start tweaking the uh, the timings or the voltages or anything like that, you're going to need to do something as I guess what I'm getting at. So I'm going to say really rather than thinking of 32 gig OC, think of it 32 gig uh, tuned. That's probably the best way to describe it. But really, I mean, just look at the data. 17% gains for literally zero money, especially if, you're, if your RAM isn't your bottleneck and you want to increase performance, just turn up your frequencies to whatever it's rated for. If your RAM is cheap enough, it might be worthwhile to upgrade to a faster frequency. Uh, the reason for this is, is your CPU and your RAM kind of work together in a certain way. It's uh, when you overclock, if you overclock your CPU like crazy to here and your RAM still running at stock frequencies, not only is your performance not going to work as well, it's going to eventually get unstable. So you have to kind of bring them both up and keep them together. So what I found is even though my CPU is by far the bottleneck, and again, I'm talking an i7 uh, 6700K, so a nice CPU, but again, <laughs> you can't get your time to zero. So it's still going to have some time. So my CPU is the bottleneck, but the RAM by turning up the frequency, I'm going to get better performance. It's going to kind of aid the CPU in its operation. So yeah, I'm like I said, I'm really surprised. <laughs> Pretty much 1% gains, at least with video editing. There's other there's other gains, so I'm not really concerned. I'm sure some games will work better. Some programs are run better. I don't know if Photoshop will honestly use this or not, and there's no good way to test it, so I'm not going to bother trying. At least there's no good way that I know to test it. However, um, if you want performance, the, the one line of this video is turn up your RAM uh, within reason. Be careful. Don't exceed your specs unless you know what you're doing. But you will get better performance in video editing if you, you know, have the right set of bottlenecks. And it's something that's free and relatively easy to do. Um, most modern motherboards have built in overclocking utilities, or I should say upclocking or tuning utilities. So you could probably tune your, uh, you could probably tune your RAM exactly where it's supposed to be with like, I don't know, a few clicks in the BIOS. But yeah, to turn it up. Uh, you can get probably 10 to 15% easy. But yeah, this was a, uh, I had fun doing this. I haven't uh, done a test like this in a while. And I've got, uh, I got all my data ready. Everything's in one place. I'm a little caffeinated, so I apologize if this is a little fast. This was a fun test. I'm actually, because of this, I'm going to be doing the two other tests. The one I already mentioned, I'm going to export two different drives and see how that performs. So I guess that'll be really be the second video in the series. And then I'm gonna do a third one. I decided to spend a little bit of money. So I decided I bought a 1070 to replace my 970, which I know is ridiculous, but I have an easy way to sell the 970. And um, I'm curious if anything, if it's gonna improve uh, encoding, or, excuse me, production speeds. So I think it'll reduce uh, output speeds. I don't know if it will or how much it will, at the very least, it will help with uh, with decoding and editing, and it'll obviously help with games. Because I mean, come on, I've I've got this G-Sync monitor, so now I can operate at 120 or 144 hertz, and it's really cool. But uh, yeah, so I'll be doing so. This one video has now spawned two others. So keep a lookout. I'll put cards above as I do this. If not, and you're a subscriber, just look around the channel. It's gonna pop up sooner or later. So this will be. Uh, I'm probably going to make a little video editing playlist. If you have any questions or anything about what I did in the testing or, you know, my thoughts, any background information, just what you thought of this video, I, I'm going to be doing probably more testing videos like this. I like doing this sort of stuff. I like mining data. If it's a test, it's relatively easy to do. I can make a couple of kind of neat graphs in Excel and show them to you. And I have fun with it. So, uh, you know, give me a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, yeah, same old stuff. If you enjoy what I do, Please subscribe. Oh, forgot the important thing. I'm Compulsion84 and I make gun, gaming, and gadget videos. This is a, I'm gonna call a gadget video because it's tied to computers. Whatever. YouTube is fun, kids. <laughs> I'm actually getting some growth, so I'm excited and motivated to create. I'm rambling, so yeah, I'm gonna cut it there. Thanks for watching.